So a new Paper Mario game came out recently, and its reviews were... Um, alright. But coming off the back of the averageness of Color Splash, and this atrocity of a middle finger towards 3DS exclusives, it's not exactly a challenge to be considered alright. Now that it's 2020, and indie developers are able to create games much more substantial than Stickman fighting games and Wii Shovelware, Paper Mario hasn't been the only paper-based adventure game to come out this year. As you know what else came out? Not me. Oh, and also Bug Fables. But hey, whoa, slow down. Before I go any further, I need to say this is a no opinion zone. I am not giving my worthless opinion on either of these games, and nor am I comparing them. But with all that being said, Bug Fables, a game clearly inspired by the Paper Mario franchise, if inspired men note for note plagiarism with a few sequins tossed in. But that's by no means a bad thing. The game is very aware of all of its inspirations and also brings a lot of charm to the table. But Bug Fables goes a step beyond the whole using an already established formula for a game, as it literally made the sequel that everyone was waiting for. When it comes to the Paper Mario series, there is a massive disconnect between the gameplay in each installment. As the first two were RPGs through and through, the third game was a story-based game where all of the writers were collectively having a midlife crisis, and the most most recent two were very linear, kid-friendly, point A to point B style games. And because of this, quite a large slice of the community seem to regard the first two games as this uniquely amazing experience, even within the rest of the series that just seems to distance itself from where the franchise began. Which is where Bug Fables comes in. If a ton of fans want Paper Mario 1 and 2 2, and Nintendo are not providing that, and it's going to make a fuck ton of money, hmm. Yeah, it seems Dangan Entertainment actually have a head on their shoulders. Because while Bug Fables isn't 100% exactly the Paper Mario game that everybody wanted, it certainly is a game that simultaneously satisfies that crowd while also being able to bring in new players and have its own community, because they took the obvious option of appealing to that demographic. In business, there is this term called market research, which, if you're not an absolute moron, you will know, means to research the market. I know, I know, massive Jimmy Neutron brain blast right there, and it's used to figure out if a product is going to sell well or be very popular. But what on earth is even the point in using stupid things like market research when you can just use your eyeballs and see the thousands of people out there screaming, make this exact thing and we will literally buy it day one. I mean, it's not exactly all sunshine and rainbows, as the developers aren't really establishing their own fan base as much as they are just using another one and hoping they stick around. But in terms of flat out numbers and getting your foot in the door, Bug Fables was an obvious, relatively easy way to gain a player base. And while Bug Fables is the most obvious and blatant example when it comes to making a game that everybody is asking for, it's not the only one using this strategy. At the Switch's launch, there was a game called Fast RMX, which pretty much only sold because it scratched that F0 itch that many people had. Even when the game itself was very shallow, didn't have its own identity, and also almost overheated many people's Switches. And then games like Hollow Knight also do the same thing, but just a lot more subtly. Oh my god, can I please just go one video without bringing up Hollow Knight? <laughs> Look, um, there's, there's bugs in both games, alright? That's some kind of correlation. But Hollow Knight came out at a time where the Metroidvania genre, to put it nicely, was an absolute barren wasteland, where fans had absolutely nothing to play in terms of new games, especially the older Metroid fans that wanted a return to form, and the newer Ori in the Blind Forest fans that wanted something akin to a sequel. Once again, there was a crowd of people that very vocally wanted something, and an opportunity to fill that void. It's basic supply and demand with absolutely no research involved because people are literally asking for it, with Bug Fables just being a much more obvious example of this concept. Which begs the question, why aren't developers doing this more? It's so easy. There are thousands of franchises out there, a lot of them coincidentally by Nintendo, that have almost been entirely forgotten about by the developers, and are just waiting for a spiritual successor to come along and give the fans what they want. If Nintendo turned the Paper Mario franchise into a puzzle adventure, and it's no longer the RPG that many people want, boom, that idea writes itself. Valve aren't ever going to make another Portal game, boom, gap in the market. Casual Pokemon fans want a more multiplayer experience, boom, look at how Temtem advertised itself. Which, to be honest, that last point kinda answers the question as to why many indie devs might not want to do this. Because while Bug Fables does it correctly, Temtem kinda... Um, yeah. And that's mainly because it didn't live up to the brand that it was trying to take inspiration from. When trying to please a specific crowd, there is almost no room for error, as everything about the game has a direct comparison to what it's taking inspiration from, which ironically enough makes its inspiration 
actually its competition. As if it ends up being worse than the original product, then why the hell would people not just play the original? There is both a huge risk and reward when doing this, as the fanbase is already established and waiting to be extorted for cash, but at the same time, they also have this dangerous thing called expectations. Man, freedom of thought really doesn't sit well with capitalism, does it? But anyway, Book Fables, great game and one that certainly deserves the title of a good Paper Mario RPG experience, while also sitting as a perfect example that unoriginality can be a good thing. Although, maybe not always. A lot of people wanted Half-Life 3, and this is what they ended up getting. Life. 